Hello everyone. We are going to talk about the persuasive essay. If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you've reviewed the assignment guidelines at the top over this essay because this video is going to go over the PowerPoint. So with a persuasive essay, make sure this is working. All right. When we think about why we persuade, when we persuade we want the audience to do one or some or all of the following. We want them to perhaps believe our argument, change their opinion about a topic, or maybe even make them take action to change something. So persuasion, what's different between persuasive and informative writing? Persuasion is a lot more difficult. We want to change the audience's entire viewpoint or opinion, or at least think about something different. Oops, sorry. Uh, at least think about something different than what they're used to. So because of that, persuasion takes more time and it is more difficult because trying to change the audience's viewpoint, even in a simple topic, a not complex topic, a very simplified topic, changing the audience's viewpoint on anything can be very challenging. The difference between informative writing and persuasive writing is that informative writing presents factual information only. Uh, so the audience is aware about the topic, so they learn something about the topic. Persuasive writing can certainly inform the audience about something too, but it digs deeper. It should still, of course, present factual information, but it needs to, it needs it more in order to be persuasive. So consider the following sentences. If you want to pause the video and read through them and, you know, answer in your head what's in, which ones are informative and which ones are persuasive, I encourage that. And we'll take it sentence by sentence. We want to, th and sometimes they're a little bit of both, but we want to make a full decision if, they're, if we think they're more informative or more persuasive. The meeting changed from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. That would be informative only because it's just telling us about a time change in a meeting. It's not saying that we, it's not in, in persuading us why we need to go to the meeting. It's telling us that there was a change in time and that's it. It's informing us about meeting information. The meeting moved to later this afternoon. Missing the meeting will cause someone to fall very behind with updates and they will be at risk for termination. If you're maybe torn or maybe you're thinking it's a little bit of both, that's okay too. The beginning of the sentence, the first sentence, is informative. The meeting moved to later this afternoon. It's just telling us that the meeting changed, right? But then it starts to get a little bit more, it starts to appeal to our emotion, our worry, that what will happen if we miss the meeting. So maybe those who are thinking, eh, I don't need to go to the meeting. I'm starting to persuade them to go and why. Missing the meeting will cause someone to fall very behind. So this sentence would be more persuasive because they're explaining what will happen should they don't should they not show up to the meeting. So it's informative, but mainly it's persuasive because it's trying to change somebody's mind about who's thinking of not going to the meeting. Broccoli cheddar is a type of soup. It's just telling us what broccoli cheddar is, that it's a type of soup, right? It's not sharing an opinion about broccoli cheddar. It's just telling us what type of soup it is, whether you like it or not. It's not really even discussed. The author who wrote this isn't telling us whether they like it or not. So it's informative. Sorry, I have a, I lost my clicker. So my little pointer isn't showing up on this. I apologize that it keeps jumping back and forth. Broccoli cheddar is a delicious soup to try because of the warm melted cheese with a healthy vegetable. That is persuasive because I, now I'm thinking about the audience who does, who may not like broccoli cheddar soup. I'm telling them that it's delicious. I'm sharing an opinion there. So delicious is a good adjective to tell us how we feel about something, subjective feeling we call it. Uh, and so those of people who don't like broccoli cheddar, I'm saying it's good because it's warm, has melted cheese and has a healthy vegetable. Um, it is persuasive. Vampires are a type of fictional creature. I'm not giving my opinion on vampires, my thought on them, my thought on the literature around them. Vampires are a type of fictional creature. I'm informing you that if you don't know anything about vampires, first fact is they're a type of fiction in, in uh, creative storytelling. So it's informative. Whereas this last sentence, the history of vampires, 
should be studied because their fascinating tales of suspense will make someone's skin crawl. Uh, whenever you see the word should, it's indicating persuasions probably at, at in the purpose there. Uh, I'm telling you that why, if you don't like vampires, this is why you should study them because there's some really good sp suspenseful stories around them that will creep you out and you'll be entertained. I'm thinking of an audience who doesn't like to read vampire lore and uh, I'm persuading them why they should be studied. So that last sentence would be persuasive. So that's just a way to kind of change your tone depending on your topic. Now, there's actually a difference between persuasive essays and argument essays. They may sound similar, but they actually have a major difference between the two. Um, both of these genres, persuasive essays and argument essays, both require rhetorical appeals of persuasion to persuade the audience, where the author uses ethos, pathos, and logos to persuade. Knowing how to use those rhetorical appeals is what makes them different. And what I mean by that is persuasive uh, essays mainly drive through emotion. That's kind of the guiding force uh, through facts. Still, of course, you want real facts to prove a point. But how you use ethos, how an author uses ethos in a personal essay, or sorry, a persuasive essay, is through personal experience. That's mainly the driving force is personal experience. Um, persuasive essays, you almost act like childlike, uh, where understandably, if a child argues, they tend to say, I'm right, you're wrong, that's it. You take that kind of immaturity with persuasive essays, where you might even use logical fallacies for logos too. Uh, and you share personal experiences, meaning they're written in first person point of view, because they're one sided, the author is opinion based. They use what's called subjective feeling for pathos where they share a lot of emotional language. And the goal is to change the audience's mind. You're not even considering the audience's thoughts or viewpoints or opinions about the topic. It's your opinion. Your opinion is right because of the personal experience that you can connect to the relatability you connect with the topic and the facts. Uh, so you kind of are in that immature kind of childlike way. I always think it's good to kind of break the rules first. Um, the goal in this class by the end of the semester is to learn how to structure a formal, credible argument essay. So I think it's fun to kind of break the rules first with these persuasive essays because argument essays, of course, still persuade through ethos, pathos, and logos, but the driving rhetorical appeal, the main rhetorical appeal in an argument essay is ethos, but it's no longer the author sharing their personal opinion about the topic. Instead, they persuade through finding formal evidence, studies, and research. Referencing professional, credible scholars to prove their point is how they use ethos. And then finding facts still with logos, but no logical fallacies, just real facts that they can use to support their claim. And a little bit of emotion because it's still a, comp it's a complex topic. Usually argument essays have more complex topic choices. Uh, so you still need a little bit of emotion, but it's not the driving force. So mainly the ethos changes changes where in an argument essay, your opinion is still implied. We know your opinion to the topic, but the author doesn't share any personal experiences related to their topic because that's called being biased. Um, we can't be biased in a formal argument. We use real evidence, credible research, and reference credible experts in the field related to the topic to boost our credibility. Instead of in a persuasive essay, you gain trust and credibility through personal experience. So that's a main difference. It's just, and also your goal in an argument essay is not really to change the audience's mind, but to get them to think about your opinion and that why your opinion on the topic is valid and is supported by evidence. Um, but your goal is to reach a common ground instead of quote, winning an argument. So that's the main difference where they're both important. They both are going to be explored, but it's fun to kind of break the rules with a persuasive essay first and be a little, I guess, immature is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> then you build towards that argument research writing where you pick a more complex topic for an argument essay. So how to structure this persuasive essay? What works in your favor with this essay is it's a very formulaic kind of five paragraph type of essay um, 
where in paragraph one, it's your introduction paragraph, where you discuss background information on your topic. This is called providing context. And what that means is you just give a brief little history or summary about your topic. Uh, why is it an argument? Who's involved in the argument? Who's impacted by this argument? And then what is your opinion on the topic? Uh, it's called background information so that your audience aware and you're teaching the audience about the topic briefly before they dive into the argument because they may not know a lot about your topic. So the introduction helps give that little summary history, a little informative, we'll say it that way. You inform the audience about the topic. Then you end the paragraph with the most important part, your one sentence thesis statement that uses the following formula. Uh, it's a formula where in one sentence, you combine these things. You state your opinion on the topic, plus reason one, that supports your opinion, reason two, that supports your opinion, and reason three, that supports your opinion. And the reason you do that is because the rest of the essay will prove this thesis, and you'll use the rhetorical appeals of persuasion to prove each of those reasons that support your opinion on the topic, meaning, You'll have three body paragraphs after that introduction. After you close with that thesis statement in your introduction, you'll have three body paragraphs. You'll start each paragraph in the body with a topic sentence that connects to the thesis. To clarify, a topic sentence is the first sentence of every paragraph. It lets the audience know what the main idea of that paragraph is, what that paragraph will be about, basically. So you'll start each paragraph in the body with a topic sentence that connects directly to your thesis so that the whole essay stays organized and focused. So body paragraph one's topic sentence will use phrases similar to the words in reason one in the thesis. Similar phrases from reason one to connect body paragraph one. Body paragraph two will use to will, its topic sentence will use phrases similar to reason two in the thesis. And then body paragraph three will use phrases similar to reason three in the thesis so that you're following that formula. So each of those three paragraphs directly connect to this thesis here. And I have some samples that I want you to review that'll kind of bring that to life if you need more examples. But just a reminder that when you write these three body paragraphs, you're persuading. You're convincing the audience that each reason is valid, it supports your thesis argument, and that um, it is persuasive. So you use the rhetorical appeals in those three body paragraphs to persuade. Remember, for a persuasive essay, these are not formal arguments, so you don't need sources to prove your argument. Instead, use the rhetorical appeals this way. For ethos, share personal experience. Words like, in my experience, because you're gaining the audience's trust that you have either gone through that something related to that topic, or you just have a personal connection or interest with the topic choice. Um, if you need to reference someone well-known related to your topic, that's also a great use of ethos. Uh, or another way to do it is just to sound very confident in your tone. So instead of saying, I think it's the best, or some may disagree, no, you should say, this is the best, this is um, the most impactful reason to my argument, my opinion is the most valid because you want to sound confident um, because it's a way to use ethos in these types of persuasive genres. And like I said, when we build more to argument research essays, you what's the word? You you come off more credible, of course, and you reference uh, real credible research. But with the persuasive essays, you pick a topic personal to you, and you share that personal connection. You've got to break the rules first. Um, and pathos, a way to use it in this type of essay, is you use emotional language and tone words. Vivid detail, uh, use the five senses to describe a setting, a place, or idea. Use powerful words. Or again, when you share those personal stories, they create an intended emotion that you have in mind. So you use tone words, kind of like when we talked about the rhetorical situation at the beginning of the semester. You think of your emotion that you have, that you're thinking about in relation to this topic, and you use tone words to hint that emotion. If you're happy or motivated, why do you want the, what words help the audience feel that way too? Or if you're angry, what words help prove that you're angry? It's a way to be a little more creative 
Um, using the five senses to describe a setting, place, or idea related to your argument, if it helps. It's called painting the picture because the audience isn't there in that moment and doesn't connect to that argument because your audience, your intended audience, are those who disagree with your topic. So using uh, painting the picture helps get helps you get persuasive in your tone as well, especially when you're thinking of emotion for pathos. And then logos, using facts, if then statements, if you don't study vampire literature, then you will not learn about all of the creative mythology out there. It's an if then statements of fallacy. Uh, logic fallacies are not good in formal arguments, but remember we're in the persuasive essay, so we can do that for this essay a little bit. Um, using facts that don't require citations, meaning it don't you're not choosing a topic that requires heavy research. So using facts that don't require citations that are common knowledge, like the sky is blue, Thursdays before a Friday, Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone, St. Patrick's Day occurs on March 17th, etc. Um, it's common knowledge if it's found on a billion different websites and um, if it's a proven fact like those. So those don't require any kind of research and are a great way to still use logos as well. So that's how you use the rhetorical appeals in the persuasive essay. And they do change when we get more to formal arguments, but that's what you're thinking about for this essay. Personal experiences are a great way, like I said, for ethos for this essay. Closing paragraph is your conclusion. That's where you close by reinstating your thesis. All that means is mention your thesis statement again. Uh, that one sentence that you had in the introduction, that signals that the argument is coming to a closing. And then you summarize each of those three reasons again. What were your three paragraphs about that focused on each of those reasons in the body paragraph? And then I think it's always good to answer this question. Why does this topic matter? Uh, answering that kind of question is a way for the audience to read your thoughts on why this topic is important to learn about and argue because it may give them ideas to create an essay out of that. Um, the conclusion when you close in that way kind of adds to the web of your topic and they might be inspired to write about something in terms of why this topic matters, why it's worthy of debate, why it's just worthy of discussion. So you close the paragraph with that conclusion. Some hints that I want you to think about, uh, write about something you know well with this essay because you're writing from personal experiences or connections or just general interests that you have with the topic. Um, so you don't wanna choose a topic where you have to keep looking up information back and forth. Um, it's okay if you need to look up brief factual information like dates or people involved in the topic or anything like that, but you wanna choose a topic you know well so that you also use ethos to sound uh, confident that you know what you're talking about as well. Uh, write about something you've experienced, can relate to, have connection with. Again, that's how you're using ethos in this essay. It proves that you are worthy to debate and have what we call agency, have credibility to talk about this topic so that you gain the audience's trust. Even if they disagree with you, you gain their trust with that. Write about something you have an emotional connection with that helps with pathos when you use that descriptive language and vivid detail in your writing, painting the picture with sights, sounds, tastes, touch, anything like that to help the audience think about it and be uh, emotionally impacted as well. And then you want to write the essay in first person point of view because you're sharing a personal connection that you have with the topic. Um, you want to avoid second person you and your because that's conversation style writing. So it's not an academic form of point of writing that we want to use. First person point of view is great for this essay because you're writing about a topic, you're using ethos through personal experience and connections. So let me know if y'all have any questions about the essay.